Hey Metalheads, ich bin Paolo und ich habe die Ehre für Magenta Musik das ganze Wochenende hier auf Wacken sein zu dürfen. Aber ich bin jetzt nicht alleine hier, sondern ich habe für mich einen unglaublich äh, besonderen Gast und zwar Wille Wallo. Wille, how is it to be here wie, at... Wie geht's? Sehr gut, und dir? Oh, wunderbar. That's probably, that's probably the German I know. Yeah. Things are good, things are good. It's been a crazy couple of days with the weather here in Wacken and this is my first time here. So, uh, so yeah, no, it seems so, to be a very special one. So what's it like to be at the mecca of heavy metal? Uh, I don't know yet. We just came in here and it was quite scary just to you know, go through the uh, catering area. You know, people have more hair than it should be legal. <laughs> But, uh, you know, they all look like Vikings, so I feel right at home. I think it's uh, not hard to see that I am a die-hard Villavalo and him fan. Mm. And uh, I think if 11-year-old me uh, would be here right now, I would lay fainting on the floor. Well, thank <laughs> But, you. You're not um, 13. So. <laughs> well, good. Um, yeah, 20 years um, waiting to see you here at Wacken. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, what did you bring for us today? Uh, we've been rehearsing our butts off. I think this is about our 80th show with the new band. So we should be in good shape. And, uh, and uh, we brought a lot of hymn songs, a lot of songs from the past and a lot of songs from the... Uh, from the uh, these times the current stuff i've been working on and, and uh, it's a mixture of all that um, i don't know to be honest with you you know i think i think audience makes the gig as well so it's always about how it all looks and feels and and uh, you know we it's it's not the same show every each and every night and that's that's what makes it interesting since i will probably be around 0.001% of that audience i'll try to do my part but <laughs> thank you <laughs> since you mentioned the past yeah. to me razorblade romance is one of the 10 best albums ever made oh wow are there some hymn albums that have a special place in your heart um, my favorite is probably Love Metal, mm -hmm. because that's the, that's the first album we used to hardogram on the cover, and we kind of found our way as a band. We felt really good as a band, and it sort of like um, fell into, uh, brought all the sort of like Black Sabbath influences more to the fore, and uh, yeah, that was important for us, I think, on a mental level, and, and uh, that was the album that got us to tour the UK and the US for the first time as well, so it was a bit, big stepping stone for ourselves, but uh, I'm glad it seems that most of the albums have special meaning, you know, to some people somewhere, so, so that's, a, that's a good sign, as opposed to just one album, you know, since making you, a dent. Since you already said love metal has a very special place in your heart, yeah. we know that Wacken is uh, the mecca of heavy metal. Mm. What would be the mecca of love metal? Well, it remains to be seen, well, probably, probably Helsinki at the end of the day, but I think we're, we're trying to bring the mecca with us. You know, so it's it's the communal feeling when the music is passion and, and uh, having a good time. You know, it's uh, I think that's it, that's it. It always travels with us. It's a mecca that travels, and, and uh, um, yeah, it's not not the only one, I guess. It's yeah. the aura around you and the the, the well, band. Uh, yeah, see, I guess the music and the and the orchestra and and uh, and the audience. It's, it's the combo. That's what it is. Um. So I have a personal story uh, with that hardogram that you mentioned. And yeah, it's sure. that um, my girlfriend and me, we actually met because we saw each, other, each other's hardogram tattoos. Ooh. And so we already knew, okay, the good music taste, we can check that. And the rest was a history. Right. And a few weeks ago, we got a hardogram each with our initials on the ribs. Oh, congrats! <laughs> Thank you. I have to say, wow, yeah, yeah. M music is a weird thing, and, and the symbols of metal. I remember, you know, being um, I grew up with like um, White Zombie, and I remember Rob Zombie's image being so strong, and the, all the the cover artwork, and, and Maiden, of course. I just found these um, little drawings I made of Eddie when I was maybe seven or eight years old in school and stuff like that. And it's uh, it's important, especially with uh, with metal and darker sort of heavier music. The, the symbol, symbolism and, uh, and the visual aspect. And uh, uh, I, I, I understand its power. I was always hoping that we could come up with something like that. And then on one stormy night back in 96, I think I drew it. And it's followed us ever since. It's, it's, it's been weird how well it's traveled. You know, hardogram all around the world and people have it tattooed. And I think it's one know. of the most iconic band logos ever made. Uh, it's like who am I to say? But uh, it's like the yin yang, but in super cool. Uh, yeah, well, uh, what I found nice about it is also that, that people seem to smile when they see it. 
you know, they have a good, good vibes, or they, they are good vibrations surrounding the symbol. So, uh, because at first, you know, people thought that it has something to do with the occult, and uh, you know, where Satan worshippers they want to steal your children, but uh, no, we only, only want to steal your money and your drugs. Maybe they thought so because of the the written out name of His Infernal Majesty. Could be, could be. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's very true. We were sort of like we were playing with fire when we were younger, but that's what you do. <laughs> um, in a very cruel world where music would not exist, Ooh. what would be the ideal profession for Villavalo? Oh man, oh what a what an interesting question. Well, without music, um, I'd probably be a cab driver. My, my dad used to, he drove taxi for a long, long time. And now he's, he's had a sex shop in Helsinki uh, for the past 30 years or so. But I, I feel, I, somehow I feel strongly, a strong connection to the taxi driver community, wherever I am in the world. But I have to get my license first, so. Is it hard over there in uh, Finland to get it? No, I'm just stupid. That's, <laughs> that's the difference, you know. It'll take me ages. Um. So we already talked about a world without music, which to me sounds like hell. Mm. So let's pretend you had an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other one. What would they say to you? Uh, I don't know, because I'm wearing earplugs. <laughs> you got to protect your hearing when you're in a rock band. Um, so you're always traveling with your crew and your band. Mm. Um, what personality traits are the ones that you value the most and the people around you? Uh, I think we're still going through a, a sort of, um, um, this is our honeymoon phase. The band is pretty new and uh, we only started touring earlier this year, so we're still getting to know each other, and which is, I find very endearing. So it's not just, it's not yet come to the level of uh, knowing in the dark bus by the smell of a fart who it is, you know, because that eventually happens and because you, you, you can't avoid it. It's a lot of times being in a band and touring is way closer than having a relationship with a, you know, with a, with a girlfriend or, or, or so forth. You know, it's because you're, you're smelly and you're, you know, you're sweaty and, and you're tired and you know, you're all those things that uh, you try to avoid in your normal life. But uh, it, all, all that stuff gets, gets seen on a tour bus. So. So it's it's quite special. We get really close to people, but um, I think in in general patience is a virtue, you know, especially when when in a rock band. Um, I think that your new album is amazing, and Thank you. in time the new songs will become classics like the old ones. You can never um, tell. I believe that you dedicated the album to your girlfriend Crystal. Yes. How did you know that she is the one? Well, the cool, well, yeah, the cool answer should be, well, I don't. But uh, no, it's a. Uh, but you just know, don't you? It's like um, she didn't have a hologram tattoo, so we can compare on that level. I didn't know about her musical taste, but uh, um, you just know, and and that's the cool thing about love and uh, and uh, and yeah, you know, in in general, because there is no rhyme and reason, and it's it is a mystical power, and it still overwhelms me as much as it did overwhelm me when I was 14. You know, still a mystical power, and that's why I tend to write songs about it, so. Do you think that love is the most important emotion when it comes to songwriting for you, or? Um, not necessarily, but, but, but what I just mentioned is, is, is the fact that I can't get my head around it, and it, that, that's what makes it interesting, because it doesn't make any sense, and it's not like, there's no mathematical equation for love, uh, which makes it, It makes it it makes it all encompassing. It's it's just yeah. It's a gift that keeps on giving. That's what it is. At least you know musically speaking, and why not in real life too? You know. Um, as a ba as a guy from Finland with a band that has been very successful mm -hmm. and a, a logo that's even bigger than the band, mm -hmm. um, what was it like getting uh, used to the level of attention to be known all around the world? Well, I, I don't think that you really notice it when you're when you're working and when you're touring because you're you're living in such a bubble um, that um, that I'd say that now I've heard of it a bit more after the pandemic and after uh, him broke up. Now on this tour, people have been telling me more about what kind of uh, how important him was for them or. 
or they started to use these words, uh, words like legend, talking about legendary Finnish band him or whatever, because when we were around, we definitely weren't legendary. We felt that we were always fighting an uphill battle. And, uh, and uh, so it's, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting used to the whole uh, uh, the, the being liked part. I thought that we were always outsiders and, and people didn't know whether we were a rock band or a metal band or a pop band and nobody really liked us and we were just a bunch of weirdos. And, uh, I would go as far to say that um, him made a lot of people interested in Finland in the first place, so maybe the tourism department, they should start maybe paying you a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I, I've been trying to get them to use hardogram on the, on the Finnish flag. That'd be quite, quite cool in the... Uh, yeah. they, it's a cross. They could t- invert it and then have a hardogram in the center, and, and that would make all sense in the world. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. For being here. It's been absolutely a dream come true for me. Likewise. Likewise. <laughs> Es war absolut unglaublich für mich, Wille Wallo endlich mal persönlich treffen zu können, ihn Fragen stellen zu können. Und ich hoffe, dass ihr auf Magenta Musik das Wacken Festival weiter verfolgt und weiterhin viel Spaß habt. Rock on! <lacht>